in here. Mike is trying to help us out. We're having some technological difficulties. So as of now, it's not uh, it's not on Zoom like it would typically be. That may or may not happen. We had a Mondo board kind of quit on us. So he's he's working. So just don't mind him. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. But I'm excited y'all are here. Excited to have a thriving church with us today. Rich is going to be leading us in music. And Pastor Rick's going to be speaking. So all I'm going to do is pray and then turn it over to them. But just so you know, Thrive Church does meet here on campus every Sunday afternoon. So 2 p.m. over in the Mean Lecture Hall. If you don't have a church family or if you can't get off campus, if you just want to learn more about them and their church, they're here today. So talk to them. Find out more about what's going on. We are so grateful for them and everything that they do for our, our campus community. So appreciate it being here today. Let me say a word of prayer for us as we get started. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to hit pause in the middle of a, of a busy day and just focus on you and your goodness and your grace. Thank you for Thrive Church, for all that they do for our students and our faculty and staff, for what they mean to our campus community. Thank you for their presence with us today. I pray that uh, these next few moments would not only be helpful for us, but I pray that it all be glorifying to you. Uh, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you for this opportunity. Help us to make the most of it today. We pray this in the strong name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. All right, Rich, he's going to come sing some songs. You might know him, if so, you can sing along. Okay. Now, I want to uh, welcome everyone and let everybody know that the two songs I'll be playing, This is Amazing Grace and uh, Great Are You, Lord. So if you want to stand to your feet and worship, that'd be great.
Awesome. You guys can sit down. Y'all doing all right? Hold on. So you guys doing all right? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Checking. You know, usually, you know, someone says, you doing okay? Yeah, no, whatever. But it's good. My name is Rick Becker. I'm the uh, senior pastor, lead pastor of Broad Church in here in Greenville. Uh, I actually founded the church about 14 years ago. And we started a, a church campus on here last year, and I was actually speaking for the first uh, for that whole uh, part of the year. But now I've got a campus pastor that's here, uh, which is really really cool because uh, it's hard to do two campuses. You know, I don't know what you guys know about teaching and ministering and stuff like that, but it's pretty hard. And I've been in the ministry, pastoral ministry, 29 years. I'm I'm 30, um, <laughs> and. Uh, I've been a youth pastor for 12 of those years, and for 17 years I've been a senior pastor. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one thing. I really love young people. I, I never wanted to leave youth ministry. I thought youth ministry was the best thing in the world. It really was. Because it's so much easier to mold clay than it is to chip concrete. You know, and, and some of you guys know what I'm talking about. But, you know, um, since I'm able to speak at least this one time, I want to give at least one message. And so I want to talk about why we exist. And the thing of it is, is each and every one of us have a purpose here on planet Earth. And I want to talk about these things. I want to, I want to answer some questions so you can live a fulfilled life. And, you know, accidents just, they just don't happen. You know, they just, it just, you know, I've had kids over the years tell me that they were a mistake. That their parents would tell them that, you know, we didn't even want you anyway. And that they were an accident, they were a mistake. And, I, and you know, I, I thought about that. I thought about that qu question. Were they really an accident? Were they oops? Were they an unwanted? Were they a fumble in the rumble? You know, what were they? I'm going to tell you, they were not a mistake. They were not an accident. Because even though mom and dad didn't know they might have been coming, God knew. He knew before the foundations of the earth. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at some mistakes that could have been. A preacher and his wife are extremely poor. They have 14 kids. She's now pregnant with the 15th. They live in tremendous poverty. You know, knowing our world and knowing our society, considering the situation in the world's population, you know, should they even consider an abortion? Because I know a lot of people do, right? And if you say yes, then what you did is you just killed John Wesley. And you don't have the, 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 one of the greatest evangelists of the 19th century. Or what about this one? A father is sick, and the mother has tuberculosis. They already have four children. The first child's blind, the second one died, the third is deaf. The fourth has tuberculosis, and now she's pregnant. Now, a lot of people I've talked to, they would say, oh, man, you know, get an abortion. Well, if you did that, you would have just killed Beethoven. A white man rapes a 13-year-old girl, black girl, <clears throat> and she becomes pregnant. And now a lot of parents, and I've talked to parents over the years, and they try to justify abortions and stuff like that, and this is one of the ways they try to justify them. But if an abortion would have happened here, and I don't know if you younger people know who this person is, but you would have lost Ethel Walters, who is, or uh, Waters, who was one of the greatest gospel singers of her time. And now this last one. A young woman is engaged to be married, and she's become pregnant by someone other than her fiancé. He's extremely upset. He's ready to call the wedding off, but she still wants to get married. Out of respect for her future husband, do you think she should abandon that life that's within her? And if you think so, you just murdered Jesus Christ. So I'm going to tell you, God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a destiny for each and every one of you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet. So I want to talk about five things. The first thing is this. God knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. He already knew you. He had a plan. He had a purpose. He had a destiny for you. John chapter 1 verse 9 says, That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. So in other words, God, that word light is life. So this is the true life. Jesus was the true life on this world to give life to others. 
And so God gives life to every single person. So he knew you before your parents even did. I know these guys got to go to sports. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Number two, God had a plan and a purpose for you, for your life before you were even born. God's plan for Jeremiah was for him to be a prophet and that, uh, to, to all the nations. God, God was not surprised when he was conceived. He wasn't surprised when you were conceived, even though your parents might have been. But God has had a plan for your life in place since before you were born. He already knew what he wanted you to do. He, and, and I'll tell you, the best thing you could ever do is tap into that plan. If you learn how to tap into that plan, you'll have the best life ever. I'm not saying you're going to be the richest person around. I'm not going to say you're going to be the most famous, but, but you're going to live your best life. When you tap into what you've been created to be, what you've been created to do, when you tap into his plan. But you know, a lot of people, they feel like failures. And they do. They say things like this, I can't do anything right. I'm always messing up. And, so it, and they just pour it on themselves. But I'm going to tell you, God does not make a mistake and he does not make failures. You are not a failure. God forms the whole person. The Bible says this. It says in Psalms 139, 14 through 16, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. He just said right there, before you were even formed in your mother's womb, he had every single one of your days planned out. And the problem that we really run into is we want to plan our own days out. And the reason why we have so many problems in our lives is because we take God's plan and we put it aside and we put our plan in place. And when we put our plan in place, it takes from God's plan and we wonder why we're all jacked up. We wonder why we get all mis miserable and everything. It's because we're not doing what God has created and called us to do. But guess what? God's so good. It doesn't matter how much you messed up. All you have to do is get right back on the plan and he puts you right back in the place. He doesn't say, oh no, you got to start at the bottom of the rung. No, he puts you right back. I know, I know in my house, I had to start all over again. When I went to school, I had to start all over again. But God's not that way. You don't have to start all over again. He said, he'll dust you off. And he'll put you right back there, right back where you were supposed to be. Now, I'll tell you what. I got a set of blueprints here. And, I mean, when you take a look, everything was planned out before the building was created. Every screw, every nail, every everything was planned out perfectly. And that's like this right here. Every light socket, every light switch, every door for this building was already pre-planned. So number three, read the blueprints of your life and discover your purpose. And the thing of it is, is maybe you've been called to be a minister or a businessman or a doctor or a computer technician or a geologist or something. Maybe someone in the room is called to be a politician. Just because you're called to be a politician, a politician is not a bad thing. There are bad people that serve in those jobs, but we need good people. We need God people. We need people who are ordained by God to do these things. See, failures are not born. Failures are a result of choosing things that God didn't choose for you. When you choose to do something that God didn't choose for you, sure, you're going to fail. See, our job is simply to follow the Creator's instructions for creation. And now, i got a question. What, what are you drawn towards? And you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm already established. I'm already uh, a, a chaplain. I'm already a teacher. I'm already a president of a university. I'm, listen, God is not done with any of you. God still has a plan for you. He's out of purpose and a destiny for every day that you're on this earth. And it might not be to end your career here at Tusculum. I mean, he, he, it might be, though. Who knows? But the thing of it is, is when we tap into God's plan and his purpose and his destiny for our lives, then we're going to be the greatest person that we've been created to be. You can't be greatness without being great in God. And it doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive or anything like that is meaningless. 
It's who you have in your heart. It's who you have living on the inside of you. It's who you have guiding and directing you. So number four, build your life on the proper foundation. Corinthians third, uh, chapter 3, 9 through 11. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. And trust me, I'm going through this a little fast. It would take me a long time to do this, but they said I had 20 minutes. I can't spell my name in 20 minutes when I'm really talking, when I'm teaching. So I'm going, Bruh! Anyway, co-workers in God's service, you are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Our foundation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our foundation. He paid the price for the sin of the whole world. Not just for the sin of the believer. He paid it for the world, for the unbeliever. And we're to lead them to that good news. It's the good news that we no longer have a master being dominated by the world. But our, our domination is by the word. And the word dominates us from the inside. Actually, we just conform to the word. We have become ambassadors from heaven. But Matthew 7, 24, uh, 24 through 27 says, Therefore... Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams uh, rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them to practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. We need to build our house upon the rock. We need to build our house upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. People will let you down. Possessions will fade away. The only foundation that will stay, that will last, is the foundation of Jesus Christ. If you want a guarantee for your future, surrender all your gifts, surrender all your talents, surrender everything you have to the Lord Jesus Christ, and allow Him to work through you, and live your life for His glory. I'm going to close with number five. Pursue God's plan for your life. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. If you follow his perfect plan for your life, you'll never have regrets. The only reason why I have any regrets in my life right now is from the times that I did not follow the plan that he had for my life. Now, if I was to tell you my life story and what I've gone through and everything like that, the sheriff's wife asked me, because I'm also a deputy with Green County, the sheriff's wife asked me, she said, how did we hire you? I said, you asked the wrong questions. I said, you didn't ask him because you knew I was a pastor, so you guys decided not to ask him. I said, that was God giving me grace to, to do what I do. And so I'm the only deputy that probably has the background that I have in the state of Tennessee. But that's God. I'm going to tell you, you can do, you can be anything you want. But my regret is this. My regret would be, I didn't follow Christ sooner. That would be my regret. My, my, when I listen to, and a lot of you guys know Jackie and Teresa. Well, Jackie goes to my church. And I sat down with Jackie at a men's meeting. Teresa's the only lady he's ever kissed in his life. He's never drank any alcohol in his life. He's never smoked ever in his life. He's, he's never cussed ever in his life. And I s s stood there and I touched him to see if he was real. And I said, Jackie, I'm going to tell you something. You have the best testimony of anybody. I said, because you had the same opportunities that I had and I failed. You know, the hardest people to become believers, to become Christians, are the ones who actually live like Jackie, because why do I need a savior when I'm not as bad as these other people? But Jackie will tell you it was 1983. He'll give you the date and the time that he met a man. Mm -hmm. And he's very happy to say the man that he met, Jesus Christ, which totally changed his life. And I'm very grateful to have him in, in my church to be a part of our college campus ministry, because we, we love you guys, man. We do. You guys are amazing. But everyone is born an original, an original, but most people die a copy. So, in other words, don't conform to the world around you. You're an original, so act like it. All right, guys, I understand. Love you. Hey, uh, dinner tomorrow, right? Okay. All right. So.
Question, how many, and don't raise your hands, how many of you feel like you're living in the center of God's will and purpose for your life? Just think about that. And how many of you have no idea why you're on this planet? And then the third thing is, I want to take a moment and I want to pray before I just let you guys out for God's will and direction and purpose for your life. If you, if you don't mind, all heads bowed and all eyes closed. Heavenly Father, I pray that you give these students and this faculty the spirit of wisdom and revelation so they may know you better. I pray the eyes of their hearts may be enlightened in order that they may know the hope to which you have called them, the riches of your glorious inheritance in your holy people, and your incomparably great power for us who believe. I pray that out of your glorious riches you strengthen them with power through your spirit in their inner being, so that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, and I pray that they, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all your holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that they may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for allowing me to come here and speak today. But that message normally would have taken about 45 minutes, and they gave me 20. I'm like, <laughs> thank you. All right, now make sure you let Pastor Rick and Pastor Bill and Todd happy where they were here. Hey, man. <laughs>